Hey there, this is me, Mr. Pi the Math Guy. Today we're going to be talking about proving triangles similar. We can see here we have a triangle and this curvy line, you might call it a tilde if you're a Spanish student, uh, it's the top of the congruent symbol. This is the symbol for similarity. So let's get this geometry party started. Here we have a postulate and it's the angle angle similarity postulate designated by capital A, capital A, and the similar symbol. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. Even as this video goes on and as I teach my land-based classes, I might say congruent mistakenly for similar because I've been working with congruent triangles much like a student might say congruent. But here for this diagram, we have triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. We can clearly see that angle A is marked congruent to angle X and angle B is marked congruent to angle Y. So what we're going to conclude from that is that A corresponds to X, B corresponds to Y, therefore C corresponds to Z. So what we can do here is we can write a similarity statement saying that triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. So there's the first postulate, angle-angle similarity. Example one, we're going to be using the angle-angle similarity postulate to write a similarity proof. Here we have a diagram. The given is that segment MX is perpendicular to segment AB and that angle MAX is congruent to angle KBX. We can see that angle MAX is congruent to angle KBX by the measurements. We're going to now mark that, and we're going to write that into our given. Any good two-column proof has a given statement, and MX or segment MX is perpendicular to AB, which we'll mark right now and we'll write in these angles. We'll say that angle MAX is congruent to angle KBX. And that's our given. Now let's take a look at a plan for this proof. We're working with angle-angle similarity. We're given that one angle is congruent. When we take a look at this idea that MX is perpendicular to segment AB, that means they form right angles. Now we just can't come out and say that angle MXA is congruent to angle KXB because we have to first state that they're right angles by the definition of perpendicular. Then we can say that they are congruent. So our second statement here is going to state simply that angle MXA and angle KXB are right angles. Before we say that two right angles are congruent, we have to establish that they are in fact right angles. And this would be by the definition of perpendicular. The definition of perpendicular says that they form four right angles. Now that we've established that these angles are right angles, we can make our congruent statement saying that angle MXA is congruent to angle KXB, and that's because all right angles are congruent, and that's a theorem. That you usually learn early on in a geometry course. Now we have established that these angles are congruent, and these angles are congruent. We have angle-angle similarity, so we can make our triangle similarity statement stating, or our proof statement saying that triangle AMX is similar to triangle BKX. And that's by angle-angle similarity. Similarity proofs are much like congruence proofs. Continuing this video geometry lesson on triangle similarity, we have two more theorems. We had a postulate earlier, now we have theorems. The first theorem is the side angle side similarity theorem. If an angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle of a second triangle and the sides including the angles are proportional, 
then the triangles are similar. That is just like a congruence, but instead of the sides being congruent or equal, in this case they are similar or they are proportional. In this sec second theorem, the side, side, side similarity theorem, if the corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. To use the side, 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 you're going to have an extended proportion in which you have three ratios that end up reducing to the same ratio or the triangle similarity ratio. Example two, we're using similarity theorems. Explain why the triangles must be similar. Write a similarity statement. So given this diagram right here, we have to write a similarity statement. And to do that, remember we have angle, angle, we have side, angle, side similarity, and we have side, side, side similarity. Well, the way this diagram is set up is we're given the lengths of four sides, and we'll be able to show this angle AQB and angle XQY are congruent because of the vertical angles theorem. So let's start with that. Let's start by writing that down. Let's start by writing that angle AQB is going to be congruent to angle XQY, and that's because of the vertical angles theorem. What we need to now establish is that the sides are proportional. And if you remember back to lessons on congruent triangles, when we had two triangles formed by two intersecting lines, this side, in this case AQ, would correspond to XQ. So that's how we should set up our proportion. The length of X, A, AQ, excuse me, I'm fumbling all over my, my words here. This would be XQ, XQAQ corresponds to XQ. And then on the other side of that proportion, we should have BQ on, in the numerator. And then YQ in the denominator. From here, we substitute in our numbers and then test our proportion. So the length of AQ is 18, the length of XQ is 36, the length of BQ is 12, and the length of YQ is 24. Hopefully you can recognize, being that you're watching this as a geometry student, that 18 over 36 and 12 over 24 both reduce to the fraction 1 half. This would be considered the similarity ratio. So that would be one way, one way to justify that these sides are proportional. You set up the proportion, and then here we have an extended proportion, three or more ratios that are equal. 1836 is equal to 12 24ths, which is equal to 1 half. Another way to test this proportion for its proportionality would be by using the cross products property. 24 times 18 gives 432, and the other cross product, 36 times 12, well, that also gives 432. 32. So these two triangles must be similar by the side angle side similarity theorem. Final answer would be side angle side similarity and this would be the work to justify that. In example three we're going to be applying similarity and we're told that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram and we need to find the length of WY. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to length, label the length of WY with the variable X. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you with this X. In fact, let's, let's just choose a different variable. Let's not use X this time. Let's use Q. That's what we're going to be solving for, the length right there, Q. We're going to be solving for the length of WY. Now, there's a whole lot of explanation into setting up the proportion that we need to set up. This is a proportional reasoning problem. We're going to show that triangle AWX is similar to triangle YWZ. And here how it is. It's since that since quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, we know that side AB is parallel to side DC, which makes AY a transversal. And since 
AY crosses AB and DC, this angle right here, this angle WYZ is going to be congruent to angle XAW. If we look at XZ being the transversal to the same two parallel lines, AB and DC, then this angle right here, angle WZY, is going to be congruent to WXA. Therefore, these two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. So we can line up their corresponding sides in a proportion. So AW corresponds to YW and XW corresponds to ZW. So from here, we simply plug our numbers in and solve the proportion. AW is 5. YW is what we're solving for, in this case the variable Q. XW is 4. And ZW is 10. So now we solve this proportion with the cross products property. 10 times 5 is 50, being equal to the other cross product, Q times 4, which we write as 4Q. Then we'll divide each side of this by 4. 50 divided by 4 gives 12.5. 4Q divided by 4 gives us Q. And we find out the length that we're looking for. In this case, I labeled it Q, is equal to 12.5, which is equal to the measure of WY. Similar triangles can be used to make indirect measurements, measurements that maybe aren't feasible by using a tape measure. Uh, shadows and mirrors are ways to take an indirect measurement, and we're going to see that in the upcoming example number four. Example four, we're going to be applying similarity some more. Here we're given a word problem. It says, Joan places a mirror 24 feet from the base of a tree. When she stands three feet from the mirror, she can see the top of the tree reflected in it. If her eyes are five feet above the ground, how tall is the tree? You can see here I got a diagram. And in this diagram, I got the tree over here labeled with this right triangle, TMR. This represents Jane's height right here. And this triangle, JMO, is the triangle that's going to be similar to this over here. This M represents represents where the mirror is at. So Jane looks down into the mirror and what she sees is the top of the tree. These triangles are similar so we'll be able to set up a proportion and the reason they're similar would be angle angle. This angle here and this angle here would be the same. These are 90 degree angles so therefore we have angle angle similarity. And in this case it's a pretty straightforward proportion to set up. We know that side JO of this triangle corresponds to side TR of this triangle. On the other end of that, we would have OM corresponding to RM. Now we solve. And what we solve for is this length right here. We could label it X if you want, but this is what we're solving for right here. So filling in what we know, JO is 5. TR is what we're trying to solve for, X. OM is 3. And RM is 24. Now we solve the proportion with the cross products property. 24 times 5 is 120. X times 3 is 3X. Dividing both sides of this by 3. 120 divided by 3 is 40. And 3X divided by 3 is X. So what we conclude here is that the height of the tree is going to be 40 feet. So there's how you use similarity in a real-world problem-solving situation.